What it do, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo. Uh, some of y'all watching right now on YouTube, you might think I'm dog face, you know, the dude with the cranberry. Because yeah. uh, somebody said I look like him, and then I was like, damn, I do. Especially when I wear this one little gray hoodie. But uh, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. We're going to have fun today, man. This is episode number seven. Seven. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? The homie uh, Joe is in the building, but he's back there working on some, some top secret stuff. Fire know? stuff. December 10th, San Antonio, Texas. If you heard it, you heard it. Uh, real quick shout out for our, our homies over at handyworks.com. That's H A N D I W E R X. It's a uh, free app, you know, property management software for users that connects them directly to vetted service providers, basically, handyman in your area. Um, they're based out of Minneapolis, but. Uh, they have some folks that can help you out in Houston, Austin, McAllen, and other spots in Texas. So if you need a handyman, use Handyworks, and it's kind of like uh, Uber for a handyman. Sus. I think Theo Juventino did a commercial for them, too. But uh, you might have to look into that. And, uh, yeah, that's our sponsor for today, Handyworks, episode numero siete, 12-part series, Red Pill Tamales. Uh, for those of y'all who are just now tuning in, because I'm getting new people by the day. And uh, especially like on TikTok, everywhere, man. The comment section is jumping. It's like a house party. At what did he said on Instagram, which yep. is the current home for this podcast, which you didn't say it last time on the last episode. You said, you just said, what did he say? Mentioned nothing about red pill tamales. Wait, I didn't wait, 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 wait. At, the, at the intro of it, I didn't even notice it until I was putting it together. Oh, I didn't say what did he yeah. say. Yeah. No, you, you only said, hey, welcome to the what did he say. Didn't say anything oh, about, nothing red, pill about red pill tamales. Yeah. Yeah. So we're calling this 12 part series red pill tamales. And it's just loose form. Um, you know, if you want to get red pilled, you know, I'm kind of like Mexican Morpheus. Hashtag Chingo warned, y'all. And uh, we just want to have a discussion. Uh, my, my boy Rob and I, you know, I I had a civic duty. I put it out there. It's Chingo Bling, the, the Tamale Kingpin. As Mr. They Can't Deport Us All, you know, Trump deported way less people. So I had to do it for my people, you know, because Biden and Obama, they deported like 3.2 million and they bought the cages. So that's just one of many reasons. But uh, welcome to the show, man. I like how a lot of people in the comments are doing that for you. They're putting those facts in there. They're having their own discussions in the comment section. The comment sections are always, they're always fire on Shingle Bling posts. But over the last few, that's, that's a good drink, huh? Mm -hmm. they're, they're a lot more, a lot more, I mean, they're aggressive, but they're also very intelligent for the, some part. Not all of them. The ones that are just, you know, trash emojis and that kind of shit are a little different story. And and I will say this, um, I totally understand that it's easy to get caught up in teams and there's a thing called cognitive bias, which is I know my team, I know my team's arguments, and I'm just going to roll with that, you know, and it happens, um, you know, obviously I know arguments from, from both sides because you know, I click on all kind of little things on YouTube or, or whatever, right? You you end up hearing most of the arguments of the left, like as to why we should give up our weapons and why we should lock down and our curfew. You know, thankfully, Texas doesn't have no 10 p.m. curfew, nothing like that. You were just telling Joe about the social dilemma and mm -hmm. kind of what you're talking about right now. You actively go out and search for a little bit of both sides of the conversation, whereas a lot of people will only just continue to be in their echo chamber, right? You would agree. And then just watch what they watch, listen to what they listen to, and never go outside of that. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to even get a little bit of the other side's perspective. Yeah, I hear the other side's perspective. <laughs> like, it's unavoidable. Yeah. Because they're, they're all in my comment section. You know what I'm saying? It's. I mean, obviously, it doesn't get too sophisticated in there sometimes. Yeah. It's just, vete la verga, puto. Mira, mira, you want to be eating tamales now cuando te conviene, cabrón. You voted against your raza. And it's like, but Biden and then built the cages and they get mad, ah! you know, but they fake news, Jingo. But they deported more news. people. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But that that cognitive bias stuff, uh, you know, let you know, don't get don't get caught up in teams. Don't get caught up in that because then it, it ends up being the same shit. Like if we all just start voting Republican mm -hmm. for 100 years straight or whatever. I mean, how you, will that be useful? I mean, the next candidate might not be the best dude for the job. So. Just basically, what all we're trying to do is, is, is uh, spit some knowledge, drop some game. I love the clips you've been picking out, uh, cool. Rob. Like the one about, um, you know, stop blaming everything on the white man. Stuff that was like a good that. one, man. Because it ruffles feathers. It's like, be mindful of it. Make sure you're not doing it. Yeah, and it's not that it only ruffles feathers, even though that is great for the algorithms, but it's, it's true. Like, people hearing you say that 
something it's almost like when if your mom ever you know tells you something right advice or something and then you hear it from your tia that you really like and you listen to your tia and your mom pues yo te digo eso todo el tiempo but you listen to your tia yeah, yeah, people they, listen to tio chio they, tio they, chingo yeah 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 the, the young tia and yeah. shit over there yeah the, you know people that listen to the tias um but yeah man it's it's um i, I don't I, I just be talking shit yeah. i don't look at it like it's my responsibility and i'm trying to be the big homie and this and that but hey, if somebody can listen to what we say on here and and be like, um, you know, uh, he kind of made, made some sense there. Or I've never really heard it put that way. Or he's right. Like, it is 2020. Stop blaming everything on the white man. Yeah. You know, maybe you're not where you want to be because you were busy fucking off. <laughs> or like a lot of these comments have said, like, uh, been, we've been asking a lot of questions on the What Did He Said page. And people have said, longtime conservative, longtime conservative family, but also equal part, first time conservative voter. Family and I were all conservative vo- or uh, Democratic voters. Dad and I, you know, for the longest. And this is our first time voting conservative. Why do you think that is? Shingo just started talking about this stuff, but they've been doing their research as the time has gone on. Um, what's leading to that trend? Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe the Internet and maybe the algorithm, too. And um, But I have to give credit to, you know, some of the, I guess, I, I don't want to say young, hip conservatives or republicans not like that but hey these days you could search you know what is legs legs it like mighty soul brought it up last time she's like hashtag legs it which is i guess stands for like the latino exit of from the democratic party right. basically kind of cutting ties and not being the way i always put it is you have to have more leverage you got to keep your options diverse keep them open it's because if they already know how you're going to vote then you're not going to be a priority. It's like, we got you in the bag already. You're like the side chick. You know what I'm saying? The side chick that's waiting to get some respect and some love. And it's like, nah, we already know you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And in the future, we'll talk about, because everyone always says, and it's true, your local elections matter more than the mm-hmm. than the uh, federal election anyway. And it's true. This is very important. We're talking about the president of the baddest bitch, which somebody put, the baddest. is the baddest bitch. Yeah, it definitely is. But, you know, we'll, we'll, I, I strive to get some locals in here that can break it down because no matter what local, no matter what state you're in, it's all the same. You know, you vote for your sheriff, you vote for your constables, you vote for your Congress people in your state, and they all have important roles in your community. Mm-hmm. Or you feel like you're underfunded or under, uh, you know, attention, you know, is given to you, then that's the kind of people you want to vote into office, not just... All right, I'm gonna go one side all the time. I'd argue that um good point. I'd argue that we found out during this pandemic how important local representation is, local officials. Right. I mean, I cannot wrap my mind around the LA mayor getting it on t- getting on TV behind a podium talking about, yeah, we're gonna cut off your water and your light if uh y'all having these big shindigs. I don't know if he means like uh jake paul and them people like big youtubers like having 300 people at them at a rented mansion or if it's like all right how many theas y'all got over there you know what i'm saying did you see that i did was it old was it new was i missing some context i mean i saw the same video i'm sure you did where it was pretty rogan reposted yeah it was was a dude doing voiceover like look, look, look at this guy yeah that's scary you know, you vote this this guy in, and then he pulls that shit, and he expects to run for re-election. And you know what? The crazy part is he probably will gain re-election in a place like that. I don't know, man. I, I really don't know how you can't look at what Governor Newsom is doing. And it, it's not necessarily a Democrat thing. Mm-hmm. He's probably just an asshole or an idiot. I don't, I don't understand some of the hypocrisy and some of the logic behind a curfew. It just seems arbitrary. Like, okay, so you, are you trying to basically make it a 10 p.m. so that people aren't at bars? And that's your way of saying, we're not going to shut down bars, but you can't be out after 10? Like, I'm trying to understand. Like, I want to be a fly on the wall and figure out, okay, um, you do understand, Mayor Garcetti, you're going to get some backlash if you're threatening people to cutting off water and light. And that should be a fucking red flag in terms of, holy shit. I'm not living off the grid. You know what I mean? I ain't got chickens and eggs and and collecting rainwater and the filtration. I don't have a bunker. And, you know, it's almost like the mayor's flexing his power on you. And I don't know what the word is, like authoritarian, totalitarian, like draconian. Yeah. Like, bro. All those adjectives are correct. They're just asserting all the power that they have, right? Yeah. And then you go over state line and it's like, oh, I can be out past 10. You know, and I guess it's like 
well, Chingo, you know, their hospitals probably aren't overrun. It's no, like, motherfucker, people are losing their jobs here because there's no work, you know, or in other states as well. Like, the hospitals everywhere aren't overrun. As a matter of fact, most of them are not and never were overrun. So I don't understand what this equation, like, what all variables, how are y'all coming up with these? Like, what's her name? Lena Hidalgo, right? Mm -hmm. The county judge, mm -hmm. right? Harris County. Um, I guess it was her job to sit with like Mayor Sylvester Turner and stuff like that and figure out all of our compliance and rules and regulations, mm -hmm. right? And then I see her on the uh, DNC convention, zooming in and stuff with the mask and hey, you know, Houston, Biden, da 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 da, Biden, Biden, Houston, Biden, 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 DNC, Democrat. Okay, cool. That's cool. You're allowed to be Democrat. And hey, get your shine on if they're gonna zoom you in. But you gotta know that half the city probably don't vote that way and they probably looking at you like okay did they tell you to lock us down like wait you didn't take none of this influence like hey hey girl we're gonna let you zoom in the day of the dnc you ready you ready because the dnc coming up you ready it's almost like please tell me there's no conflict of interest there like you're not creating our rules and lockdowns and regulations and mandates based off of what your party is kind of telling you or leaning or you know what i'm saying Does yeah that make sense? for sure because you have to think that that happens and i actually it's a really good point you brought up because i've never looked into because she was making a lot of noise for a bit as far as the lockdowns and the mandatory you know face mask thing which is i get it everywhere is like that for the most part some states and cities are like whatever right some business owners can also say whatever but she was really wanting people to assert their power of stopping people finding people you know the curfew thing and that did not last very long like Texans, especially Houstonians, were like, let's take it back a few notches. How, how, well, obviously we have a Democrat mayor. That doesn't necessarily mean we have more Democrat votes. Right. <laughs> we're, right. We're learning, especially in big Democrat run cities. That's where there's a lot of alleged stuff you're going to hear in the Supreme Court because uh, Ted Cruz is arguing one of the cases for this Trump thing, right? And, you know, Ted Cruz has already won in a fight in a case. In the Supreme Court, he's mm -hmm. putting his name on this particular case. Yeah. So I don't know much about it. All I'm saying is, you know, I know everybody's saying it's over, and we are. We've already established. Like, I'm not one of them people that's like crying. It's, Take your L, Chingo. Yeah. Let's like, leave that for the liberals. Yeah. So it's whatever. But I mean, they saying it ain't really over. I don't know. Y'all might think I'm queuing on, <laughs> but uh, if if and when the shit go to the Supreme Court. And Ted Cruz wins one of them cases, and I don't know all the ins and outs of like, well, you can go the next step is, you know, with a Pennsylvania thing that that didn't go through. So, you know, what happens, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. But let's just say they reverse the shit. And they're like, oh, sorry, y'all. I know, I know we made newspapers and stuff that said Biden wins, but uh, yeah, Trump. You know, Trump's in there still. Another four. <laughs> the Dude, look on those people's man. faces if and when that happens. Oh, man. I'm going to meme it up. I'm going to have so many memes ready. Speaking of, since we're talking about it, here's one, something I want to pull up. This is, a, this is a witness from the Michigan hearings, which are, are going on right now as mm -hmm. far as the Dominion voting in the machines. I want to play it up. I'm queued up. It's not very long. It's only 45 seconds. Uh, two of the main observations that I witnessed at the TCF Center on both the third and the fourth when I was there. Um, when, I, when I got down there on the morning of the 4th, I went back for an, an additional day because I witnessed so many irregularities when I was there on Election Day on the 3rd. Immediately upon walking in, I, I ran into uh, Randy Bishop. And Randy owns radio stations. He, he's very IT savvy. He said, Brian, I was here all night. What, what's going on here is unbelievable. He said, let me show you something right now before I leave. So he walked me over to the high-speed scanners and tabulators. And he said, see all these Ethernet lines running out of the uh, tabulators? They're all bundled together as they accumulate. And then they're all connected to these routers. And then they all go to the main uh, computer. He said, these are all hooked into the Internet. And that is illegal. And it should not be happening because it opens them up to hacking. So I was aware of that immediately. So, mm -hmm. so you, when that happens, when a witness is telling the people of the court the facts mm -hmm. and the people in the court are having to say, is that true? Oh, fuck. How come we didn't know that? Is that real? Who can access that? Mm -hmm. Oh, anybody? Mm -hmm. Oh, anybody locally and foreign? What do you really, like, what, do you leave anything past the, the realm of possibility when that happens? Well, all I know is that half the country is not wanting to entertain the idea because it wasn't that long ago that everybody said Russia collusion, Russia collusion, Russia, 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 collusion, collusion, collusion. They tampered our elections. They tampered our elections. But all of a sudden, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's no corrupt, can't, can't happen. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, I don't want to hear it. 
Their exact words are, it's the safest election in modern history. And I'm sure Republicans probably been cheating. They probably cheated on this one too. They probably both cheated. Yeah. Maybe one of them cheated better than the other. But, you know, a lot of these voting things happen in these warehouses, in these buildings. And, you know, if you sign off on this little software, now that's the software you got. And the Dominion people, they said that no one's allowed to look at the code because it's proprietary. Right. <laughs> ah, <cabron. laughs> that's convenient. Hey, y'all, uh, I know y'all trying to see if y'all's elections was legit, but you can't look in the software because, you know, that's our shit. Got to go by. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Arizona. I want to say it's Manicopa County, mm-hmm. which is the biggest county. Is it Arizona? I think it's I think Arizona. So, yeah, Maricopa. Yeah. Which is also the deci- basically the, the deciding county in that state mm-hmm. was the only county that used Dominion. All the other counties in the entire state used another software. It was probably Maricopa, I believe, is Phoenix. Right. And, you know, a lot of times, I don't know if they have a Democrat mayor or what. It, it, you talk about, I think it was two dozen, I don't know, might have been three dozen counties. It was the only one that used it and the only one that had these kind of irregularities. And it was the county that decided that state that it turned blue, yeah. basically. Everybody was bragging and shit. Ha, right. ha. Um, Hey, don't ha ha to me, motherfucker. I'm <laughs> I'm a lifelong Democrat. I ain't never voted Republican one time. One time, Craig. One time, Craig. One time. Uh, and, you know, when things like this come out, a journalist on, a spe- you know, a specific side that you can guess will take something from it and post a headline, you know, with the article or even the video. And the people that read it or reshare it or retweet it will have a caption like, todavía, right? Without even having watched the video or read the entire yeah, article. Yeah, yeah. And it just, again, perpetuates the it's it's over thing. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. this beer's really good. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, we sipping a day, ladies and gentlemen. And I wanted to also in that same vein ask, you know, do you find there there maybe to be some irony that people at Jingle Bling shows, for instance, never before would have thought how many Trump supporters they were sitting with in a club or how many Trump supporters were actually also Jingle Bling fans the entire time. And now all of a sudden, it's like you can't be one of those and attend a show or you're not a real Mexican if you voted for him or voted that way. Because take the character out of the role and you voted Republican or conservative or had those values, it wouldn't be a thing, right? It just wouldn't matter. But it's uh, this guy. Me? Oh, to people in general listening, like they're, they're very riled up that this is the guy that Meaning has... Meaning Chingo Bling, Mr. They Can't Deport yeah, That's yeah, what you mean? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I totally get it. I completely understand because... You have a thing called low information voters, and you got a thing called the red pill, and then you got a Mexican Morpheus. <laughs> so I wasn't I wasn't just born woke and shit. Like I didn't just know Biden was full of shit. I mean, my spidey senses told me, like, hmm, something's off about this dude. And then you just start seeing the footage, and it's like, oh yeah. Uh, but again, I, I totally understand, man, because low information voters. You know, you have this algorithm, you're in a new silo, you never hear the arguments from the other side. You didn't know Biden and Obama built the cages. You didn't know Obama deported more people than anybody with Biden on his side. You know, if you didn't know none of this, if you didn't know Trump really didn't tell you to drink bleach, that didn't happen. That was a hoax. Nobody's that fucking stupid. Um, If you didn't know, he didn't really call them people, uh, the Nazis fine people. That was a hoax because you missed the part where they cut out. The part where he's like, and I'm not talking about the Nazis because yeah. I've already told y'all that shit needs to be condemned. Um, then, yeah, then you're going to think he's Orange Man Hitler and you're going to see me as a self-hating whatever. That same Orange Man narrative, too. It, it, it's funny because he does like to tan, right? Whatever it is, self-tan or whatever it is. It's, it's tan in a can. <laughs> yeah, tan in a can. But if you can go and actually find the the pictures from, let's just call them press conferences or, or you know, uh, addresses to the nation or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then find the article in which that picture was posted where the saturation has been brought mm, up. It, mm-hmm, it, it's all mm-hmm. fabricated. Like, it's, he's not really that orange. He's just a little <laughs> orange. They're like, seriously, they're trying to defend how <laughs> orange he is. But anyway, I mean, I think it's a good point because what Rob is basically saying is, you know, these publications, it's clickbait. They make money off of ads. They have to put up the most divisive controversial thing that's going to push your buttons and when you're emotional they can make more money off you and they can get you to vote how they want you to vote they can manipulate you when you're emotional so there's going to be little tricks like what rob just mentioned it won't just be a photo there's going to be like if it's pro biden they're going to find the most flattering photo of him if this was a republican website or newspaper or whatever 
and it's against Biden, they're going to find the worst photo of him. Just like with Trump, they're going to crank up that Photoshop and make him Whataburger <clears throat> orange. You know, as orange as they can make him. <laughs> Whataburger orange. Somebody please make that meme. <laughs> yeah, because I'm seeing your bag right there. <laughs> Um, you know, they're going to try to make them as orange as they can make them because if you hate them, you're going to be like, look at this Whataburger orange motherfucker, you know? Real Texans would be like, he's, he can't eat Whataburger. Yeah, you can't. not allowed. Chingo, you're not allowed to eat tamales no more because you voted against your raza. Oh. It's like, but Biden and Obama deported all the raza. You know, I didn't even, I, and I'm not going to give the person any credit because I, I honestly don't remember the account. And I'm sure you've gotten bukus of this dumb type of, uh, and, and all they are trying to do is like take what's happening right now and use it to their benefit where they'll make like a response video to Chingo Bling, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or whatever, like the people you're talking about that made a podcast or make a video yeah, about uh -huh. you, whatever. And this guy, somebody sent it to me in a DM and uh, just nobody that follows me or you or it didn't follow any of the accounts, but just sent it to me in a DM. And it's this guy just going off on, you know, Chingo Blink should be ashamed of himself, this fool, that. I'd never heard fool an essay more in a 10-minute period than that 10-minute video. What, what, uh, do you remember the title of the video or how the guy looked? Uh, chubby Mexican guy in a little room with an arcade machine in the background. Was it uh, Gil, American Cholo, something like that? Maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Why? What? Only because um, when all these little podcast people started... Um, putting up stuff on YouTube. Well, I DM'd all these people all on Instagram. I like, I'd either leave a comment, DM me something, something. I'd give them my phone number. Most of them would be like, nah, homie, there's no room for discussion. We already know where you stand or something. We've heard what we needed to hear, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they want to milk it and keep it going. Because if they have me on their show, sometimes they might think they'll be mistaken and think like, Nah, because then we're going to have to be nice to this fool, and mm. then we can't keep it going. Well, this dude, Gil, from uh, American Cholo, he he did a thing. And he was like, you know, this, this son of a bitch. Da -da 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 -da, all this stuff. Well, he was actually one of the people that actually called me back mm. uh, like two days ago. So, obviously, all this shit already, been like three, what, it's about a month old already. So, I'm like, hey, what's up? Who is it? He's like, hey, it's Gil. Da -da -da. I was like, oh, okay, you know, you know, first of all, sorry, I cussed you out in the comments. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Snickers commercial. Yeah. But um, but no, nah, it was one of those things where I'm like, look, bro, I'm 41. I got kids. I'm married. Let me tell you, you know what I mean? Just you could hear it from me. And it's just two grown men. And here's a long story short. Hell yeah, I let me be a guest on your show. Let's show them that we can make content and listen to each other. He's like, dude, I'm pretty fucking conservative he's like i just can't rock with trump and da, da, da. i was like i know it's gonna take too long for me to fucking uh deprogram all the hoaxes you think are real and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to show you how he really didn't say bleach and yeah. shit like that and uh so i was like don't worry about that part it doesn't matter i was like i'm not gonna convince everybody i was like some people are not gonna come back i was like that's fine um but anyway i'm like let's make some content let's cross promote let me get on your shit you know what i mean like yeah. i was like i don't mind you having views i was like at least you fucking called me a lot of these other motherfuckers did not that's hilarious i was like you called me i said i want to be an ally i want to be an asset i was like you know i mean we ain't gonna wrestlemania it and be <laughs> like orale, you know fuck you fool some jake paul shit fighting uh nate robinson oh man shit <laughs> <laughs> did you see those clips yeah yeah, uh, I saw a whole bunch of memes and shit. But hey, hey. I mean, if you uh if you're brave enough to get in the ring and shit and have people kick you in the head, oh well they were punching, there's boxing. Yeah. You know, I mean but that's how the internet is, right? They don't have the guts to get in the in the ring and run the risk of getting knocked out and be and being the meme and shit. Yeah, I, who was who was it? Did you see that? Somebody who came out and said, like, you know, that's that's the price he pay the people pay to entertain. And he went in there and he entertained and he got paid and whatever, whatever. But it was and just, potentially Concussed for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Got hurt. A little bit of CTE for sure. Nothing crazy. Oof. Nothing. Yeah, they, they don't do brain transplants. Um, they don't got those yet. Not so yet. Protect your brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, mask up. Protect your brain. Right? Is that what they say? Mask up, bro. <laughs> wow. Mask up, Houston. Mask up, Houston. Funny enough, um, this is what I was mentioning earlier before we started. Uh, so good old Jake Tapper. You know, one of the most reliable CNN anchors in the entire world, right? <laughs> 
this guy's always so serious. He's like, please take me serious. That's what it seems like when he's talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this breaks, I believe it was yesterday or two days ago. And let's get your quick little uh, uh oh, let's get it. Your take on this. Like we didn't already know this, right? Versace let's Mariachi. See. Let's see. Documents from inside China, documents that reveal the missteps and the chaos of the Chinese government's early response to the coronavirus pandemic. The documents are from Hubei province, home to the city of Wuhan, where the pandemic is thought to have started. They show authorities released misleading public data on the number of deaths and the number of cases. They took, on average, three weeks to diagnose a new case and much more. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh is breaking the story for us right now. So they're just breaking this shit two days ago. When 10 months ago, who was saying that already? What side was saying that well, already? Like Trump? Yeah. So basically, Jake Tapper just said, we we got some information that basically says that how China had lied about their st their their statistics and the information about how many deaths and when they had the first case and all of a sudden it just broke two days ago, and that's China. That's been one of my biggest uh, reasons too for you know kind of really paying attention to this. Hmm. Who's nicer to China? Like, who's playing hardball with China? Who's, you know what I mean? Is Biden over there being all cool and shit? Like, what kind of deal y'all got going on? Because, I mean, according to the, the Hunter Biden laptop, it was some big paper being exchanged. Um, and, like, who, obviously, Trump was always like, we got to play, you know, hardball with China. You know, China is eating our lunch. You know, and Obama and them, they just rode out the red carpet for China. It's and a pretty I, spot on fucking Trump. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, or yeah, maybe maybe that's Taco Carlson talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that good. At my, I got to work on some of these impressions. But but throughout the year, you know, <laughs> when we was on lockdown, I had time. <laughs> uh, just throughout this progression of like, huh, what's going on with this COVID thing? Or like, hmm, it, what a coincidence that not only the fentanyl is coming from over there, not only are they stealing our intellectual property, not only are they trying to spy on motherfuckers, but they also that's where the plague came from and it's like hmm well they say you know trump and them pretty much a lot of republican people were saying like hey china don't play fair like they're probably lying about everything pertaining to this shit and we can't trust them and when trump closed the airports the flights coming from wuhan everybody called him xenophobic Biden, right. including Biden. They were like, no, there's no need for that. Why is he doing that? And then Nancy Pelosi was in Chinatown out there in the Bay. You know, you should eat and visit these air Chinatowns in your you know, area. And it was it probably came from a good place. It was probably like, hey, y'all don't hate on our Chinese Americans. Like, let's not don't take it out on them. Maybe that's what she meant. But it's like, OK, y'all trying to basically anything Trump does, they try to do the opposite. Hey, y'all. Uh, y'all seen Trump close the airports? Let's call him xenophobic and let's dance around Chinatown saying, come to Chinatown. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing but a little flu. And uh, I mean, that's that's what I've been peeping, which is what you just read, which is something that CNN is just now saying. And, we, you know, like I said, a lot of people saying CNN is going to turn on Biden. But um, that's what that's what we've been. That's been the hypothesis, which is China doesn't play fair. You know, did they know? Did they mishandle it? it? The data and the you know their numbers that they're telling us and the stuff they're telling us that works. It was like they purposely wanted to throw us off and confuse us and make sure we didn't know. Especially all the like disinformation, like fake videos and fake fake this, fake that, like fake nurses and stuff saying, "Y'all, it's so many bodies out here" or whatever. Right? Right. Just so confused, and they were not being helpful. They weren't like. Hey, y'all, this is kind of how it works. This is our data. This is what we found. We tried this. Uh, ventilators didn't work. It made it worse. Nothing. They <laughs> wanted us to be in the dark. And the crazy part of that about that, too, is like we need ventilators and we need whatever. And then, you know, Elon Musk starts providing a, a certain amount of, of help. And then later, later, you come to find out that, you know, people being on ventilators ended up being bad. Yeah. People ended up dying at a higher rate if you got put on a ventilator, which, I mean, I guess you know that or you don't know that until a certain point, but did they know that and still go with that narrative of we need more ventilators and well, get people on ventilators? This is one thing to always take into consideration. Um, you know, is there an incentive? Like, is there a motivation behind fucking us over and letting us be confused and not knowing what is up and down and ventilators and this and what works and is it? Because initially, bro, when it first started, when the news started breaking out of China, 
initially they were like, oh, it's not human to human. It doesn't spread like that. Right. Don't worry. I literally remember, oh, hey, babe, the COVID thing I've been hearing about. Well, don't worry. It turns out it, it, it doesn't jump species and shit. She's like, oh, okay. Do you, you remember know, when you heard that? This was probably like January, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, it, I don't think it was December. I think it was January. But um, I know we did a show in Kansas City, and we came back, and we stocked up on that pure, Purell right there. But um, Must not have been too worried. Not a lot of Purell missing from that bottle. Well, we have a couple other bottles. <laughs> and, you know, soap and water works and shit, too. Uh, Sal- saliva. <laughs> Be hygienic, motherfuckers. Just some huevos. Ah, um, yeah, earlier, you know, you mentioned about, uh, you know, the Republicans probably cheated as well. And you're right. There's probably been a history of some fuckery going on on yeah. both sides, right? But to that same point, and I just thought about this, and I was trying to find out exactly how many House seats flipped uh, this year in the House because the Republicans maintain the Senate. And then we're supposed to not gain any seats in the House. And on the other, on, on the contrary, I think they gained like over 12, maybe, you know, 14 plus and are on, a, on the path to regain the House, which... Nobody saw that coming, right? All the pollsters said that was wrong. But also, they're not contesting any of those house flips, right? So if you're the side that's saying that, no, Biden won and there's no irregularities and they're trying to contest and stop that from being researched and taken to court and have affidavits filed and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. How come they're not opposed to any of these houses that flipped, right? Isn't that weird? I mean... Wouldn't you think that you would want to contest all the house seats that you lost? Oh, we we were also screwed, man. We got a lot yeah. of irregularities on our side. Nah, Not they, one. They probably don't. Uh, maybe they the main person they wanted, like the main position, like the legislature. Or what is it? The uh, executive branch. I don't know, man. I really don't know what's going on with all these different states and their cases, and I can't even predict what the fuck really is going to happen. Um, but uh, like what I was saying earlier about um, looking at incentive or motivation. Yeah. Like could. China benefit from America's economy going to shit and us being on lockdown, considering they make all our medicines. We done shipped a whole bunch of jobs and factories and, you know, all that over there. You know, it's like. Did you see that that video of the pool party in Wuhan from last month? Is that Was it real? Yeah. Did you see it? It was like a whole bunch of people. Huge pool party. Yeah. With the DJ and everything. So what they got over there. Some, it's just like. That's, that's ground zero, isn't it? Like, like no curfew or no, what happened? No, nothing. It's just fucking just, partying and so living just, life. So they just exported some shit and they just turn it up. Just turn it up. Didn't that, shouldn't mm-hmm. that piss every American off if you see that video and you read that, you well, know? Well, we're, they're winning right now because right now we're so divided. Yeah. So that alone says that they're winning. Yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're winning because we're so divided. Like, especially, and the media's against us. I remember when Trump first was saying enemy of the people, I was like, Man, this orange motherfucker tripping. These are the journalists, bro. They hold truth to power. And they out there asking the tough questions. And they're they're nonpartisan, bro. How you gonna say that about CNN and, and the media and shit? <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Trump tripping, dog. First he called us rapists. And now he over here saying that, you know, what about freedom of the press? This motherfucker's a dictator saying enemy of the people. And then I start seeing, oh, the media is the enemy of the people. They really want us at each other's throats divided and you know lo que les conviene you know they're making their money yeah they're uh they're clickbaiting the shit out of people and making sure certain it's just low information voters galore yeah that they just sell out that's it that's all they know <laughs> sell out now there's a meme that i'm gonna use later for some clip as soon as I, I find it um where it's like trump and earlier you were saying how they'll just go against anything that he says like which was why it was dangerous about the vaccine like if he everything's good like if he, he says hydroxychloroquine is a good medicine and it were uh, <laughs> people rather die you know yeah, and th- no they'll they'll put out some bullshit studies and they'll say like well some people died from it and it's like well look at the study the person was like 105 and they gave they gave him probably a big dosage or yeah. something like it might have been covid that killed him but yeah, a person died during the study, and now you want to run with that. I mean, like, Trump's promoting some medicine that ain't proven. It's like, no, it's malaria medicine. I mean, that's old news, right? Because hydroxychloroquine obviously hasn't proven itself to be a good enough cure. That's why we don't hear about the shit no more. Dude, I was going down a, a rabbit hole. And again, you know, I, I showed you that, um, that picture. Somebody, like, drew up or made up a potential logo for this red pill tamales as it continues oh, yeah, yeah, turns, I saw that. <laughs> into it turns into its own thing mm-hmm. and it's you know and i looked at it, i was like oh that's cool and he's like yeah you know for the tamales and also the tinfoil for the conspiracy part of some of these things 
And oh, I, that's gangster. Right, right. So what I've been lately on is, you know, we're hearing more about these vaccines that are coming out. And I was, I went down a rabbit hole of a, of a somewhat trusted journalist who now lives in Chile, uh, but is American. And uh, long story short, and I'll I'll throw it to you, a couple things to you, and we can maybe talk about it next time. But there's a lot of crazy fuckery that's also a part of these vaccines where, you know, it's all military organized. It's all military run. The FDA has almost no part in this at all. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a little creepy, you know. And I'll leave it there that you guys can maybe do some research until next time that we talk about it. So here's some more research. And uh, I might get put on a list somewhere if I tell you all this. But AOC already has you on a list. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not going to shout out too many motherfuckers, but... It's a dude named Shea Serrano. Okay. Talking about he got a list. Mm. I'm like, bro, come on, son. Mm. Put me on your list. Boo-boo. Okay. Boo boo. Boo boo. <clears throat> so here's another thing might get me put on the list. Uh, <laughs> is uh, research this. Okay. So it's a dude named Pino Shea from Chile. He ended up becoming like, he was like military, but he ended up becoming uh, like a bit, pretty much like a dictator, I believe. And the CIA helped him get in. And the CIA, you know, that's their job mm-hmm. to tamper in other people's elections and interfere and meddle and get influence and maybe get out like a, a, a person in power in another country. Que le conviene, like that's good for the U.S. And some would argue that some of this stuff has been weaponized against our own citizens. You know what I'm saying? That might be some 10-4 shit for you. Right. Allegedly. So basically the meaning is pretty much like Hey man, you got some of the best persuaders in the game working or working with the media and making sure that the plan is going accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Meaning are they divided? Are they are they uh, low information? Are they at each other's throats? You know, do we got them in these new silos? And the algorithms and uh technology made the shit easier, I guess. Interesting. To brainwash people. Yeah. Because I know the word brainwash sounds very conspiracy, but as we've discussed in previous episodes um you know we don't have to call it brainwashing we could just call it persuasion yeah and it could even be the mildest form could be a news outlet prioritizing and curating yeah what they want to push because it's their station even though it's you know regulated by the fcc and it's supposedly the public airwaves they can program it how they want Mm -hmm. they can put whatever shows they want so if they want to focus on, hey man, there's people out there kicking puppies. If that just, if we're just gonna focus on the puppy kickers. Like man, hashtag, stop kicking puppies. And there's a mural for the puppy, and, and one of the famous puppies is little, little Kenny, the famous little puppy. You know what I mean? He yeah. was kicked by this man, so then they lynched him, and you know the, the puppy kicker, and they beat him, beat him up in the streets. You know what I mean? It's hypothetical as fuck. Maybe this drinks <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> that might be what's happening. But um, but my point is this: the hypothetical is this. The news can make something a thing, basically. Have you clicked on or seen the uh, hashtag CNN tapes? Oh, around? shit. What is that? You haven't? Mm-mm. So you're familiar with Project Veritas? Uh, slightly. Okay, so Project Veritas had uh, yesterday came out with, yesterday morning or this morning, came out with what is, it's basically, they've been recording CNN 9 a.m calls like the morning call that they have with all of you know Mm. cnn about what they're talking about what the narrative is that day or that week he's been recording it for two months and he's secretly secretly so it's a dude that works up there uh Mm -hmm. so they had they had intel to get into these meetings somehow okay um and he dropped yesterday i I mean i gotta play it i gotta find it but he's gonna trickle out a bunch of small cnn tapes about all kinds of shit little meetings the little meetings yeah all the stuff about how they they basically said like the first one was you got we have to hide you know the, the Trump you know news about this or we can't uh, you know talk about the hearings that are going on or his uh, his arguments about not conceding and you know he he got robbed or whatever of the election uh, a bunch of stuff that they just all talk about every day that they're not going to talk about they're not going to put any attention on it's fucking spicy oh dude look that up so is that what's going on with this Jeff Zucker dude yes so. That's why his name, like he's in hot water or yes. something? So this is what I've heard, bro. So Jeff Zucker is the dude that runs CNN, right? Correct. They say that the reason Kamala is in the spot she's in is because Jeff Zucker, like, really loves her. And he paraded her around, like, New York elite people. Like, hey, this is this is the home girl. Like, we're trying to get her in. And when they were in the primaries, and it was like 20 Democrats up there, mm-hmm. Bernie and Yang, Tol- well, Tol- I don't even think they let Tulsi up there, uh, uh, Beto and all them people. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, Tosi was up there. Yeah. She roasted the shit out of Kamala. She was wearing that white dress. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so when it was twenty of them up there, Kamala dropped down to like one percent or like single digit, like just bad approval, and she dropped out before California even had a chance to even have some say in that in that primary thing. Mm-hmm. That's how bad she was doing, but she still got the spot. Not only because she's female, woman of color. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but they say that Jeff Zucker over at CNN really wanted her to be the pick. And you kind of got to roll with what CNN says. Think about it. Think about how much power the media has. If you're the Democrats and Zucker and them at CNN are like, mm, nah, bro, they went with Tulsi instead of Kamala, for example. Right. For example, right? It'd be like, how the fuck are we going to beat Trump if, if we didn't pick the person CNN likes? Right. So it might. Oh shit! It might be true. I don't know. That might be some Tim Ford from the Tamales. Hundred percent. Oh, if I forget, Joe. Since Joe's here, we should do something with this Mexican Morpheus thing, where either I got to dress up like Morpheus, mm-hmm. and we got the green screen, and I might like, like, maybe pop up on Theo Juven. Maybe he's Neo yeah. or something. I don't know. And I hit him with the red, red, like red tamal, blue tamal, yeah. or some shit. <laughs> and he fucking takes the red one, and then we just cut to like. The crazy matrix numbers all around him and him being like ah, like dodging fucking bullets or dodging comments or something and then it can end but it could be a series where it's like mexican morpheus dude i had the same idea about having the characters meet their conservative counterparts like el mamado meets his conservative like, counterpart no way hay que votar así it's like que wey? <laughs> yeah. no way la pinche cámara no vale madre yeah that's funny That'd be hilarious. Joe, write that down, please. That. The way y'all did the, um, the uh, was it Theo Juve and Canelo? I remember mm-hmm, one mm-hmm. where you do the seat and you're sitting, you know, like that. Oh, my God, that'd be fucking hilarious. What if, um, it's funny, we're brainstorming on the air. I like it. People get to see the, the, the war room. How the juices go. Yeah. It's like the CNN tapes. <laughs> so what if, what if the Mexican Morpheus, like, um, let's say me or Joe, anybody, Canelo, somebody is going to make some hot chocolate, right? And he reaches for the abuelitas, which we have in the house, by the way. I was just pointing out that they're owned by Nestle. But let's say he reaches for abuelitas, the hot chocolate, and then Mexican Morpheus pops up. Dun, 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 with like the red pill, blue pill. And he says, do you want to know? And it's like, ah, uh, see. Sí. And he takes the red pill. And he's like, basically, it's, it's multinational. It has GMO. It's not really Mexican at all. It's Swiss, Swiss-based. Swiss I blah, like blah, it. Blah, blah, blah. I like all those ideas. Joe's on it. Joe's the master. He's like, man, I gotta make all this shit happen. How am I gonna create these two fucking conservative and democratic uh, mamados and Theo Juves and who else? One wears red, one wears blue. It's funny. That's hilarious. Let me hit Marisol and say, hey, uh, baby, bring me a trench coat because I'm about to be Mexican Morpheus. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yo, my comment section been lit, bro, with these little clips when I called out Latino Hollywood or all that type of stuff. Just not calling out, but just kind of pointing out. Yeah. Like, hey, we should probably take a more entrepreneurial approach. And, you know, because think about it, man. If you're an OG in Hollywood, you probably want to help as many of the next generation as you possibly can. Right. That way, when you're older and shit, they might be like, hey, man, let's put old boy in it, man. He was always cool. And you always, they always going to put you in shit because you help put them on. But if you ain't help putting nobody on, you about to just be old and shit and ain't nobody... You know, I don't know. You're right, though. I mean, people see that and they agree with you. And there, a lot of people are like, thank you for using your platform to, you know, talk about these things and not just, you know, follow the status quo, which is the status quo is the the other side. But you know what they hit me with? What? Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. The, the left is very status quo these days to me. They hit me with, oh, he's just trying to pass off blame. And he's just he's just mad because, you know, we called him out as a Trump supporter. So now he's calling out Jorge Ramos. Right. And it's like, no, I just think it's interesting that sometimes things ain't always what they seem. Sometimes there might be something in there where it's like, hmm, could that be a conflict of interest? Like what I just mentioned about Lina Hidalgo, the county judge, where it's like, okay, I get it. You could be of whatever party you want to be. But... How many of these rules and mandates are somehow motivated by this is kind of how my party does it mm-hmm. and I'm sticking to the script. So that's really what upsets me where I'm like, please tell me that as a public servant, I don't know if they take an oath and all that shit, but it's like, please tell me you didn't do it for no clout because they zoomed you in at the DNC and now you you sticking to the script with us. Right. 
and now you fucking up our economy and hurting small business and stuff. I'm gonna play a little bit of this because this is the this is the initial one. Was this uh, a day ago, right? Mm-hmm. So this is him. It's kind of long. So follow uh, James O'Keefe, who is a. F- Play, oh James O'Keefe, who 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 is that? Dude? Hey, uh, this he's the founder James of uh, Project Veritas. I've uh, listened to your CNN calls for basically two months, uh, recording everything. Um, just wanted to ask you some questions, if you have a minute. Um, do you still feel you're the most trusted name in news? Because I have to say, from what I've been hearing on these phone calls, I don't know about that. I mean, we got a lot of recordings that indicate you're not really that uh, independent of a, of a journalist. Okay. Um, Thank you for uh, thank you for uh, your comments. Um, so everybody, in light of that, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll set up a, a, a new system and we'll uh, we'll be back with you. We'll do the rest of the call uh, a little bit later. We're going to okay. release those recordings today at, at seven o'clock. So stay tuned. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. So um, you just heard me talk to uh, uh, the president of CNN, Jeff Zucker, and inform him that um, uh, that we are going to release. Uh, a number of recordings today. Uh, I unmuted myself into the conference line, and they're still on there. They're listening to me right now. Uh, this is being live streamed for those of you still on the call. Um, and so I, I encourage you all to go follow James O'Keefe and Project Veritas if you want to keep up with shit like this. Because I mean, Hannity had him on Fox yesterday. This guy doesn't he doesn't get very much airtime anywhere because you know he breaks shit like this. This is like straight up whistleblower type shit. So he's a, like a journalist. Yeah. Okay. Independent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I forgot what it, how he started Project Veritas, but he was one of these mm. super America, you know, first people that wanted to shine light on all this sh- corruption that was going on. America first. What a concept. It's not a popular concept. What a concept. Not a popular one. Think about that, y'all. Like, I understand most of the folks listening might be Mexican-American, and we have our roots and our heritage, and we want to be raza first, and but we're Mexican, right? But think about that. Think about that for a minute. Most of us are born here. Most of us are U.S. citizens, I'm assuming. And technically, we're American. And we live here. And we work here. And we're raising families here. What other country should be first? Who? Who should it be? Indonesia? Jakarta? Who? Who? (laughs) Who? What other country should be first? China first? Canada first? America first. It's it's kind of mind blowing that. That's Sorry, my bad. America first. <laughs> Sorry for saying that, everybody on Versace the Mariachi. America first. <laughs> uh, American rapper, a Mexican American rapper. America first. <laughs> Versace Mariachi. And and that's that's like how dare you say that? In how the dare comments. you say America first? You're supposed to be Raza first. Bro, I'll tell you this. So I got my Spotify. We were just talking about this. The Spotify rewind. You know how you're always in my top list. Um, in my top five, I guess because there wasn't any new jams. Like I had other artists that went in my top five for the first time in like eight years, oh. uh, including Tigres del Norte. And I was jamming a bunch of oh yeah, Puerta Negra was a number three song, most jam song of the hey. year. And you know, people might I might say that people be like, you fucking liar. Like no, I swear to God. Promise, fool. I promise, fool. Yo, so. Before we stray too much away from the Project Veritas, yes. I am very interested to hear what was, ca- what was captured on that audio, what all they were saying over there in them CNN. Because number one, I'm a nerd when it comes to mass, me- mass media, mass communication. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like slogans and campaigns. You know, I have a minor in what the fuck is it? <laughs> communication. Hold on, hold on, man. Hold on. Okay, so my major is uh, business administration with right. a focus in marketing, but my minor is... Um, that's how long it's been. It's something about, like, media. It's like media management, like mass media, some shit. Okay. A minor... Communication management. Communication. I said that. I think that. I have a minor in communication management. Some oh. shit like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's how educated he is, everybody. He doesn't know how many degrees he has, It's right? just a lot of debt. He's got more degrees than Joe and I do. It was just a lot of debt. <laughs> no, nah, right. I, I just got a little bachelor's, but... I can give y'all that I, I I I can't remember how much they were charging. Let's just say it's a hundred grand. Okay. Let, I, I can't Hypothetically. Remember, I can't remember what it was, right? Let's just say it's twenty five grand per year. I can give y'all eighty grand of that hundred grand in terms of marketing. If you just learn the four P's of marketing, price, promotion, placement, product. You just learned that. You already learned the shit that I paid all that money for. So PayPal Chingo at. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I just saved you a hundred fucking thousand dollars. But uh, I'm really curious 
to hear what's going on in these meetings and how they're strategizing. Because I watch it, Rob, when I when I look at Cuomo, uh, what's his name, Chris Cuomo or Don Lemon or mm. any of these people, any of these people, Hannity, I'm paying attention to the production value. I'm thinking, okay, I can see how the the light is bouncing off the hair. They probably got a light back here. Like I'm looking at, I'm looking at, okay, how many camera people is there an editing room? Like how much of this is scripted? Is this an opinionated show? I'm just looking at production value, and I wonder, I wonder like. Did he review this? Did he memorize it? Is he just reading off the prompter? Did he practice it? Why did he make that face? Is it all instinct? Like Tucker uh, Tucker Carlson? Yeah. He'll give you that little look. Whatever he's saying. He says something. And he's just looking at you like, you fucking idiot. Like as he's critiquing yeah. Biden or somebody like, AOC. She thinks. Da, 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 da. And who, who used to work? Performers. Yeah, who used to work for CNN back in the day, and like he, they've all made their transitions from different networks and different, uh, even ideologies and different perspectives of things. Like Tucker comes from a, a, like a wealthy family, but if you watch him on Fox, he's like the everyman's man, right? So it's not to say that he can't shift his perspective and, and actually feel that, but you should take everything they say with a grain of salt. And again, watch them at the same time that you go out and listen to you know red pill tamales or do your own research. It's it's super valuable that you do that. What, what did you call him? Every man, what? Like he's he's an everyman. He's every man's you know for everybody kind of thing. So so this is a thing that I I heard. I can't remember who said it, but they pretty much said that the Republican Party has become yeah like the every man's <clears throat> working party. like a working class blue collar type of party. It switched. Whereas the Democrats are all Wall Street elites, elite like coastal elites. <clears throat> uh, you know, rich white women. Um, yep. Speaking of uh, white liberals, I sent you a clip from Malcolm X. Maybe we can play that audio. Sure. Um, I had sent it to you. Um, I just got it. I, heard, I listened to the first two minutes as I was setting this up. Um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. I, it might be cool to play maybe at the end. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because the thing about the Republicans becoming more of the everyman type of vibe, like, hey, don't let them take your guns away. Hey, what, whatever happened to free speech? Or, hey, why can't we go to church? Or, or hey, don't lock us down and take our water and electricity. Hashtag Chingo warned y'all. But people don't realize, like, bro, when you're all up in my comments being a cholo with a keyboard, you do realize you're siding with Hillary and Wall Street and, like, just rich elites and people that want to lock you down at 10 p.m. and threaten to cut off your light. Like, those are the people. That's that's why you mad at me for. I get it. Trump says crazy shit. He tweets crazy shit. But you're literally on the side of uh, Harry Styles in a dress. <laughs> right. Oh, dude. And I actually uh, we're gonna keep, we're gonna pick up on that here in a bit. But to keep on this um, Project Veritas CNN tapes, like here's one, and they, they're start, they're starting to trickle out, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, when I went on their Twitter, they were like dropping a new one in ten minutes. So here's a here's a, a clip of uh, Jamie. Or I don't, not a clip, but a screenshot of Jamie. Gangle, I don't know what her role is, but this is all like the top of the top of CNN that are on these calls, right? Mm -hmm. And here's a quote from the tape. News organizations have to be very careful and very responsible about not giving at real Donald Trump too much of a platform on his, uh, too much of a platform for his not conceding. So basically not covering any of that, that he hasn't conceded the race, that he's fighting all oh, these things in court. So basically make it seem like he lost. Biden is in yeah. and business as usual. Yeah. So basically, don't let everyone know that the fight is still happening, right. even though the news doesn't show you. Right. That's why you're in my comments talking about take your L. Exactly. And what the other side's trying to do at the very, I mean, again, like how right is Fox right now? Who knows? Or OAN or Newsmax. But independent media also is trying to put this stuff out there so that if and when this gets overturned, the Civil War isn't as large of a fucking Civil War. It's not Iron Man versus Captain America, you know? It's not fucking Antifa tearing down your business yeah it's like oh wait we were hearing about this happening but here you have people saying no don't tell the people this is still going on that's amazing because you know what else happens when see you know i'll just say cnn and like liberal mainstream media when they do stuff like that and make it seem like he won't concede whatever like uh just it's over keep it moving well what happens is anytime folks hear about Oh, they're still trying to count votes over there. Silly. It's over. Like, it really makes all your Fox News type, you know, the right type shit seem very weird and conspiratorial. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's almost like like if, like if people were to tune in right now. Oh, they're batshit they, crazy. They That's, watch CNN yeah. all day, and then they hear Chingle Bling and Rob talking about, yeah, CNN in their meetings 
they tell they they literally say make sure people don't know that they're still fighting this fight we seem like complete maniacs yeah i mean they're probably like chingo's fucking lost it yeah and uh it, there was another tweet in specific i wanted to pull up but it, here's one kind of get the gist of it where trump had because re- he's, re- he's retweeted a lot of the stuff on his twitter which people obviously love to eat up but uh cnn tweeted back at james o'keefe and said legal experts say this may be a felony we've referred it to law enforcement how ironic too that the left is referring it to law enforcement when they wanted to fund all the police right so then trump retweeted said looks like journalism to me but cnn wouldn't know anything about that and then also said they didn't find it uh, illegal to record the first lady and release those tapes for days on end which is 100 percent true so so you're saying CNN is saying it's illegal? Yeah, they tweeted back and said, legal experts say this may be a felony. We've referred it to law enforcement, which... Oh, yeah. How first, convenient. first y'all say defund, <laughs> and now y'all talking about we're going to send this to law enforcement. I wonder, is it illegal? Uh, he had in from somebody at CNN. How is that illegal? He mm. didn't hack into the line. He was mm. granted access to the line. Interesting. Wow. But again, I can't wait to go here. What yeah, said on go it. follow the hashtag at if if Instagram will even let you follow it, because I know they were suppressing hashtags recently. Mm. I don't know if you noticed that if you clicked on a hashtag, it would say hashtags have been disabled temporarily for, you know, election mm. security or whatever the fuck. Mm. So you before uh, yeah. before you could click on one and see, you know, latest post, trending post, whatever. Now you just click on it and you can see those hashtags, but it's not necessarily the newest use of that hashtag. So whatever. But still mm. check it out. Um, Man, when you think this pandemic is going to be over and I can do comedy? Because, I mean, I could do comedy in Texas, but I pretty much hit all, like, my big markets. Uh, well, shit, right now they might want to see you again just to, you know, say, hey, thanks, brother, in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, but I'm I'm just curious only because, you know, I mean, I got a whole bunch of other projects. Yeah. But it's kind of like the rap game. It's, you know, I want to, you know, this shit is jamming. But uh, please don't put me in no category with no rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We just move different. We think different. Like, this is not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I miss comedy. I, dude, I fucking miss comedy so much. Just going to the improv and watching somebody perform, you or anybody. It's an art form that right now a lot of people are like, damn, I really underappreciated going to a live show. <laughs> Music too, but comedy is another level. You know what? That's <clears throat> That's interesting that you say that. It's almost like we took. Uh, social life, nightlife. I mean, if you're into clubs or bars, I don't really do that anymore, but, you know, club life for granted. Well, there's something about a comedy show when you go and communally you're laughing and having the best time of your life. Your serotonin is super high. You're jovial with 100, 200, 500 thousands of people in a room where it's just bouncing off the walls and back to you. And it's like a high, unlike, I mean, you could jam out, mosh, you know, twerk it up, whatever at music concerts, but comedy is a special kind of magic. If you, I don't know if you agree. Yeah. No, it definitely is because it's like mass hypnosis. You know, when you match, when you sync up with the audience and you're on that same little rhythm and you're able to riff <clears> and you're, you're thinking on your feet and, you know, just even the stuff you have scripted, I mean, it's working. And yeah, when it's one of those shows, it's like a roller coaster ride that everybody's on and they're riding that wave together. Yeah. And then maybe they sense that you found a new tag for something or a new way to enter or exit a joke or, a, you know, it's like. It's so fucking unique, man. I love it. But honestly, to answer your question, summer of next year. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I, I have a whole bunch to keep me busy between now and summer. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I miss comedy. Uh, so here's something to maybe, I don't know if you saw this story. Maybe even Joe may have seen it. But are you familiar with Ellen Page, the actress? Mm-mm. Joe, are you? Uh, she was the chicken Juno. You know, she's played in like X-Men 3. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. So as of uh, as of today, uh, she has come out as trans. So she's now a man. So she came out and is a man and wrote a huge long tweet um, that I'll just bore you with the first sentence. Hey, friends, I want to share with you all that I am trans. My pronouns are he, they and my my name is now Elliot. So it's not Ellen Page anymore. She's Elliot. What's the they? Uh, Maybe that day she's not a he. It's just uh, I'm not a she either or a he. So I'm a they. Word. Word mm. to your mother. Hmm. I didn't know how common <laughs> that was. Dude, like I said, man, the dude was hating on TikTok. Yeah. Joe and I were like, man, who the fuck is this dude? I bet his shit's private. I bet he, I bet he ain't got no posts. Man, this <sighs> dude had a whole bunch of work done. She, I mean, so 
she's also she a while back and i pulled this up too she came out at uh chris pratt who's you know a very vocal christian and very you know he doesn't like again he's not very political but kind of sides on that uh loosely and she tweeted at him like he was on john oliver's show or uh what's the other guy with the glasses Colbert? Yeah, Colbert. And it's like, okay, um, but his church is infamously anti-LGBTQ, so maybe address that too. Just, you know, just going at him, and now it comes out, you know, as trans. Mm. And not that it's necessarily the reason that's dangerous, but kind of a reason that's dangerous is because that's one of those narratives that the left perpetuates, right? Where it's like, restrooms for everybody, you know, transgenders can play any sport, women and men should be mixed at all times. And here's actually a clip of Chuck Schumer being asked a question about this, mm. and let me see what you think about his answer. Biden said that on his first day of office, he will give transgender students access to sports, bathrooms, and locker rooms in accordance with their gender identity in all federally funded schools. Do you think he has the ability to do this, and do you agree with this decision? I agree with the decision, and I know he'll check things out thoroughly legally. He will check. He's agreeing with the decision of who? Of Biden. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So Biden is trying to do... That would be his first executive order as president. Is make all the restrooms... Locker uh, rooms, the whole shebang. Whatever and, gender? Yeah. So it'll be co-ed? Pretty much. So here, we'll listen to it again. And I know he'll check things out thoroughly. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to re-up re that. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this shit. And it's funny because it comes out at the time, you know, where we're talking about Ellen Page. He will give transgender students access to sports, bathrooms, and locker rooms in accordance with their gender identity in all... Sports, mm. bathrooms, locker rooms, and according to their identity. It's gender identity. So basically, it's mainly for like school-aged people. Yeah, yeah, And all federally funded schools. So, so high schools, public schools, middle schools, yeah. So a, a public school, a kid who, let's say, was born male, mm -hmm. and he identifies as female. Yes. He can go up in the women's restroom. Yes, restrooms, locker rooms, play sports with them. Now, how many of these little kids are just like wanting to get in the girls' bathroom? And you just might. saying, hey, uh, yeah, uh, principal, principal. That like, would have been me. That would have been me. Me and all my homies, uh, we identify as women today. We can, ladies Can we go today. up in there? Yes. What the hell? And parents would basically be able to do nothing about that because it would be... I know something you could do. Private school. 100%. And obviously, I mean, that, that can be very, very expensive. Um, but that's what I've been seeing as a... Uh, if you can afford it, <laughs> do it. And isn't there that... that what is it? The uh, the voucher? Mm -hmm. is, is that still a thing? I mean, I don't, I don't know enough about... Yeah, we'd have to take a deeper dive of how mm -hmm. that works. Like, can you just pull your kid out of a school, uh, mid-school, let's say, or whatever, and take them to wherever you want? Will that using school, like that voucher will that school accept it you know yeah, using that money that's assigned to your kid for in that public district school funds. yeah <sighs> wow and that's again that, that goes and this is one of, i mean again people will say like well if it doesn't affect your life why do you fuck with it you know why is it it's like it's not necessarily that it's like saying anything in history well what happened to the jews didn't affect my life but shouldn't we speak up about it isn't that a bad thing i mean it does if you have kids in yeah, you public gotta talk school, to your kids about this shit now if you have kids in public school i mean my 12 year old she's in private now but I'm so happy she's in private now. Yeah. I mean, I just see the difference night and day. Yeah. Imagine, like, I have two six-year-olds having to tell in a boy and a girl who are very boy and very girl. And then all of a sudden get this, you know, in, in the public school. And the boy has to, so am, can I be a girl? Is Are my guy friends now girls? Mm -hmm. Is that, is that yeah. for real? Yeah. It's probably a lot for, how do you explain that? So let me ask you. Um, so Biden already came out and said, First thing I'm going to do is all public schools, gyms. Yeah, transgender like, equality. He said that? On, there's a speech? like he already, Yeah, I'd have to find it. I don't know if it was just something that was uh, written or... Huh. And, you know, I wanted to play this clip, too. Um, okay. This is a... Hashtag Chingo warned you. <laughs> Watch a clip. So this is a clip of adults who push a toddler dressed in a rainbow clothing uh, to publicly announce that he is a girl named Phoenix who would prefer to be a she and a her. Okay. So, hey, this is a tweet, mm -hmm. just to get your reaction, Chingo, why not? It's a video? Yeah, it's a video somebody posted. This is real shit. Real shit. Today, we choose to recognize, honor, love, and celebrate anyone here who would claim their identity publicly as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning, intersex, pansexual, asexual, or any category that I've left out. <laughs> This is Phoenix. So a little boy walks up. She gives him a flower. 
I'm a little shy. I'm a little shy you know, with his deep ass voice. I'm a little shy, Phoenix. I'm a shy, Phoenix. Okay, you can tell them that. Yeah, you can tell them that. He's probably ain't even sure about this. Of course, he's like, should I tell him I'm a girl like now? You know that she's a girl and she prefers she and her oh pronouns. God. Pronouns. And that's the kind of parenting that's going on around the world, you know? I don't know if you don't have kids, it might be like, whatever. But also, no, it's not whatever. Well, it's interesting because he, that little boy is what, six? Uh, Four? Four, okay. How imaginative are children? Like, their imaginations. And they're little sponges. So if you're telling a kid, you sure you want to be, like, what are your pronouns now? They're, they don't know what the fuck a pronoun is. They can't even you, read yet. And then if you're suggesting, don't you feel like a she? You sure you don't feel like a she? You sure you don't want to be a they or whatever? If they're six, they have a big imagination. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a gender scientist or nothing like that, but would you argue that it's possible? It's possible that you could kind of confuse a kid and just kind of like kind of brainwash him a little bit like no no you're not you're phoenix motherfucker you're not kevin anymore you're you're remember yeah 100 percent. just the way i i indoctrinate my son and say hey you love cars we're gonna watch fast and furious and we're gonna play baseball and we're gonna be manly you know we're just gonna do shit that we both enjoy doing and he's gonna like more of it because we watch it together or we do things together yeah yeah absolutely um that it goes back to that hashtag manly men yeah thing that uh, candace owens started um I guess on her story, she was resharing people. I think someone sent her a picture of like their their teenage boy out there shoveling snow, and she put hashtag manly men, and Candace reposted it. And uh, it's funny how people take offense. It's almost like those are gender roles, and you're you're forcing him to be manly. And it's like, no, he's probably a a, a, a teenage boy that needs to shovel snow. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like he's probably strong enough to do it. You need the exercise, like. It's your fucking responsibility. The snow is in the fucking driveway. Yeah. So I don't give a fuck how you want to identify, but you need to shovel that shit. And it, it's it's sad that people feel that that shit is ignorant or closed minded or it's insensitive or it's not empathetic to people who might identify differently. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. almost like, is it a bad thing to promote manly men type of shit? And that's why I got to, you know what I'm saying? Start showing y'all what I'm about. You know, you're going to see me at the shooting range. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You might see me out there on some land and shit with a big-ass truck. Ba -da -ba -ba. Shooting a whole bunch of shit. Buku guns. Talking about come and take it. So, Puros corridos and guns. Yeah, you're going to see me at church with the AK. No, I'm just kidding. God You know, because you're all about it. Because, you know, you're representing, but you also want to go to church. It's just, it's super bizarre because that, that really well, you does. You can't bring those in there, right? You know, you... I mean, if you're homeboys with the pastor, you probably could. Okay. You but y'all know. know what I mean, though. This is Texas, baby. Come and take it. And uh, it's the word that he said, red pill tamales. We, you know, we Mexican Morpheus over here. Dude, one of the comments I saw too, I don't know if you noticed it. I saw it at least twice where it was like, uh, Texas Mexicans are different. They all act white, you know? I'm like, huh. No, this is what it is. It's um, obviously a lot of people in California. I didn't grow up there, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But from what I observe, they already kind of look at us different. Because you have Tex-Mex food, you have like Tejano music, um, as it is, Texas culture, it is different. Mm -hmm. We are, and we have no problem accentuating that. Even from, from when I first started in the rap game, like me, Lucky, a lot of these d dudes from over here, they didn't know how to take us. You know, especially if some of the Mexican rappers out here say the N-word or, or the tattoos are different, you know, yeah. or, or their prison gangs are different or... Uh, just all the culture, like why do they wear grills, homie? What the fuck's up with that? Y'all want to be black? Or if, or if a Texas rapper, let's just say, had like braids or cornrows or something or anything like that, it's like you're supposed to have a bald head, homie. Mm. You know, you're not raza, and it's just because you're just looking at it from a different perspective. Like the entire universe does not revolve around one state. It doesn't. We're a big ass state too, and there's a lot of other big ass states, and and you got probably. New York Mexicans that, and Florida Mexicans are not going to be over there. Florida Mexicans, they might have dreadlocks. They might have the gold teeth are different. They might use different slang or their cars might be different. They're not riding slabs or low riders. They got donks over there. It's, it's all different. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's all different. So um, amongst those differences, you also have this perception of Texas fools are all Republicans. And it's like, mm, no, I'm lifelong Democrat. This is my first time voting like this. 
Um, so that's not even a thing. Like most of us, especially if we're young, we probably don't even get that involved right. in, in politics, period. Um, so there's definitely that perception of if you vote Republican and you're Mexican from Texas, well, you hate yourself. You're like the crazy Cubans in Florida. Yeah. Was, shit like that. You might as well just claim Cuba because you can't claim us no more, bitch, because we're Biden. We're Democrats. We're Raza. It's like, bro, relax. Okay, Kamala's not from Sinaloa. Like, calm the fuck down. Y'all act like Biden is Mexican the way y'all... These are two old white men y'all want to fight over. She's Jamaican and Indian, right? Yeah, yeah. She's Indian Indian, uh, and Jamaican. Her dad is Jamaican and her her mom came from India. But she ain't Mexican. Like, y'all act like, oh my gosh, she's fucking... She's fucking down, fool. Like, you gotta vote... Like, how dare you? I get it. Trump is orange man Hitler. I, yeah. I totally understand why you think I'm a proud boy and this, that, and the third, whatever. But, but yeah, I've, I've noticed that. Like, I even heard uh, some comedians from out there, they really just trip out on Texas. They're just like, man, what are the audiences like out there? Or, or I've been before and fools over there don't speak Spanish. It's like, okay, because you met one fucking dude or... You know, fools over there don't speak Spanish. All Mexican food in Texas sucks. Uh, all those fools are Republican. All those fools hate themselves. They're all coconuts. And it's like, no way. Like, how the fuck? What do you want to have? A more Mexican contest? <laughs> Dude, I spent more of my dev- dev- uh, developmental years in Mexico and the Valley. Like, I don't know if it gets much more Mexican than that. Yeah, but if, if you vote Republican, then you hate yourself. You're not raza. And you can't, and a new one, you can't have Mexican food no more. Cause that's what they told me on TikTok. Take those fucking dry ass tamales <laughs> and fucking put ketchup on them and see if trompas will feed them to you because you sold out your raza. And then I hit them back with Obama and Biden deported 3.2 million more than anybody. And they built the cages and homeboy kicked it with the KKK. Hit them with the copy paste. That's cool. They're like, I fuck facts. I duele. I duele los facts. I. And English was my first language, even though it doesn't sound like it. Like, come you on, say man. English or Spanish? I'm sorry, Spanish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spanish. Rob be so proud of his of his uh, non accent and shit. He, I am. He man. bring it up every episode. Dude. Oh, I know y'all can't tell. Y'all can't you know, tell. Y'all, if y'all just listening and y'all not seeing me, mm-hmm. I know what y'all thinking. This motherfucker white <laughs> as fuck, white as shit. He don't know shit about fuck. But really, I'm just about America, right, Joe? I mean, I'm just white. <laughs> I'm just white. <laughs> Uh, all right, Chingo. Well, how are we end in this episode? What are, what are we letting them go with? What kind of words of wisdom from uh, Morpheus? Man, we should probably play a clip of the uh, Malcolm X. Clip. Actually, I'm going to take the whole thing out and put it at the end of this podcast so oh, we can okay. hear it all. Okay. And to preface it, this is the question I want to add to it. So, I don't know what year Malcolm X made this speech. I don't know the content. I don't know where, who he was talking to. But he pretty much says, like, the white liberals are just more slick than the than the white conservatives he's like they're in this football game against each other and they're battling each other he's like and we i guess he's talking about black people we end up being end up being pawns in this little political football game where they just try to act like they're our friends but then they use us type of thing and my question is listen to it and wonder or you know ask yourself and rob you let me know what you think yeah Um, does that apply to Latinos as well? Meaning the white liberal ain't really your friend. They just kind of use you as a pawn. I feel it because it, it hits different when a white person jumps in your comment section and calls you a fucking sellout. And like, bitch, what <laughs> motherfucker? This is between me and my people. This family business. We, this is our dirty laundry right here we going through. And you coming from over there across the street calling me a sellout or something. And then I usually hit them with like, is this your way of reminding me I'm a, I'm a brown man and I can't leave the plantation? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like Chelsea Handler did 50 Cent. Karen's a real man. Yeah, they'll get offended on behalf of others and try to cancel some shit. And I wasn't trying to cancel Abuelita. I just want y'all to know how marketing works, how packaging could be persuasive, how things don't always seem. You're more than welcome to support a Swiss multinational uh, Nestle Company, chocolate company with GMO in it, Buku sugar. I have some in the house if you want some. <laughs> Buku sugar. Uh, or if you want to just take your money elsewhere. But what I was trying to do with the, uh, sorry, I'm jumping around. No, no, no. What I was trying to do with the Abuelitas thing is not, hey, everybody, let's shift blame. Let's cancel them. Just kind of like, I'm going to fuck with your head a little bit. 
and you may not know some of this stuff. Um, you I'm know, gonna, uh, mm -hmm. no, you're right. I'm actually going to give the name of it. So it was uh, Malcolm X, and the title of the video is "White Liberals and Conservatives." So you can listen to it here at the end of the podcast, or look up the video. The video is just a still picture with the speech behind it, so it'll be the same thing as if you just listen to it here. Okay. So they yeah. know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, see what you think. And of course, like always, thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with us and listening and and keep the questions coming. At, follow at what did he said. There's always clips, you know, on Instagram. Um, I need to hurry up and share more of those on my platforms. But I want to let people know, like, I'm not trying to be political 24 seven. It's just every once in a while I got to stir up the pot. <laughs> you know, I got to let the roaches come out and all the haters come out. And uh, you might be invited to the next block party. You never know. You never know. Sus. December 10th, San Antonio, Versace Mariachi, album release.